Hi YouTube, this is John Moeller and today I'll be showing you the 1802 based Cosmac Elf, a very famous microcomputer trainer and early microcomputer for the mid 70s that I replicated, that I built around 2013 or 2014. It's a bit more advanced than the original Elf and by a bit I mean a lot. It has 32K of ROM, 32K of RAM, and an external bit-banged Q-line serial port that you can see trailing out the back. I'll run a few examples with this, but before I do that, I want to show you the components on the ELF board and then the expansion board that I built for it before. Both of these are fully wire-wrapped, as you can see, when I flip it over. And I can feel the heat of the voltage regular heatsink. The switches were always kind of janky. I don't, I don't know if I, I did that part quite well. Now the expansion board wire wrapping. That was a lot of fun. Very tedious, but quite a bit of fun. Nowadays, I think it might... It probably would have been better just to do this in, emu in emulation on a PC, a Palm, or even in Arduino. There's a Uno 1802 that does everything an ELF can do. Way, way better. It's way easier to build than that. But that said, let's take a look at the components of the ELF a little more closely. I'll move my tripod and then lower it a little bit so we can get a better view of the ELF and the expansion board. All right, on the bottom of the ELF are eight switches used to enter bytes into memory. The high nibble and the low nibble of each byte. On the right side is a button to proceed through viewing bytes. When you click it, I'll show an example. Like that. Or just the right switch if I was to enter in bytes. So that's those switches. Right here is the run switch. So when I flip that up, it'll run whatever's at quadruple zero hex. So that's the run switch. In the middle is the write switch. I turn that on if I want to enter in bytes. Memory protect if I want to view bytes. Right above that are two TIL 311 displays. These each decode hex right in the display. The integrates the Integrated circuit is, pun intended, integrated into the display. And to the left of that is the QLED. Let me try and see if I can enter in a program to drive the QLED. I'll enter in the opcode 7B. Oh, that didn't work. 7B. And voila, you see the QLED goes on. And there's other programs you can enter in to flip the QLED on and off and even, you know, say drive a buzzer with it, or in my case, use a serial port with it. A lot that can be done with that one bit output. Okay, on, off, on, off. Very good. And see, yeah. Okay, so I'll flip that all down and then show you the rest of the board. Right above the QLED and these two displays are the glue logic and drivers for both the switches and the displays. Then there's the 1802 processor here, a CDP 1802 ACE. This is CMOS. It's pretty low battery consumption, or battery consumption, power consumption for its time. A color burst crystal, since I thought of doing pixie graphics with this, but I didn't end up um, getting that to work, and I couldn't find an 1861 Pixie chip. Those are pretty rare. And then above that are more logic, I think, for memory decoding, as well as RS-232 up here. Besides that, there's also a buzzer that's tied to the Q-line. That's really fun. When I you know run the serial monitor, I can listen to that. And at the very top are the hot voltage regulator here. Well, warm. 32K EEPROM in a ZIF socket. 
and 32 ks ram finally above that is an expansion connector for this serial cable and because of that with the q line at 2400 baud i can up to 2400 baud i can use the serial monitor which is from the spare time gizmos elf 2k as we'll see that's really feature packed and there's plenty you can do with it now what's this thing on the right well this was an expansion board that i built and i used a little bit you can see there's a 256 LED panel here. I was hoping to use that for graphics, you know, maybe take a light pen and play games or something with it. But I actually never ended up doing anything with that. And to the right of it is the hex keypad. I did do something with this. This works great. Nice clicky chiclet feel. And I use that for the, I think it's Elf Hex it's operating system eHops or something and it's a little monitor that lets you type in bytes with the hex keypad instead of having to flip the janky sort of unreliable switches and that worked great but since I've added more chips to this and more you know potential features like an ADC I think this ended up drawing too much current for it to work reliably so this gets set aside and disconnected for now at least. Maybe one day I'll pick that up again. And that's really everything for the ELF. I'll try that cube bit driving again. 7B. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, so that works. Yeah, you can see the input's a little bit weird. I'll try that a third time. 7B, that worked, 7B, yeah, something happened there with the uh, memory protect, yeah, some of these switches are, are not, not that great quality. And now I want to run the monitor, so I'm going to enter in a jump command. I will do... What am I going to do? C0, 8 zero, zero, zero. Okay, that, <laughs> well, that came in fine. Now I'll go ahead and run. I'll see 98. Oh, error. Unplug, let that sit a second, and re enter that. So jump to the memory address 8000 zero, zero, zero in hex. C. Okay, not so good, but it should run properly now. Or not. Good sign. It's weird it got stuck. Let's try it one more time. C0800. Oh, there we go. Very good. So I got a successful opcode. So you can see it took a little bit of trying and just there's some issues with the keypad, but. Voila, I was able to get in the ELF monitor. Now, I'll move over to my Chromebook that's sitting over here. Open up PuTTY. Zoom in on the screen. And let's have some fun with this. Right, okay. 
and and zoom in a little further. Did you hear that beeping? You might not have heard it over the cat. That beeping was the Q line. I was using serial output from the ELF, so you could hear the buzzer that's also connected to Q. Nice, fun feature. Right, Mangle? Oh, here she comes. Okay. Okay, girl. Yeah, so, uh, so there's a help feature for the monitor. I can type in help. Yeah, you can hear that buzzing and all the commands. It's got built-in basic, built-in fourth, built-in assembler, set it. I'll have to go back to that when we type help in. Um, again, yeah, boot call run. Oh, disk, disk sector editor. So if I had an IDE interface, I could use it with this too. Really, really cool. I'll let the cat back out. And let's take a look at memory. So I can type in examine. Zoom in a little bit better so you all can see this. Yeah, I can type in examine E000100. C08000. The first three bytes are the jump instruction. And then we can see the conversion to ASCII on the right side. As far as programs, you know, we have uh, basic and assembler and fourth. I'll just type in BAS. I'll do new. This is RC basic, I think, from, yeah, Mike Riley. And let's have a simple, fun program. Oh, wait for that prompt to come up. 10 print. Not hello world. Let's do hello YouTube. Hello, comma, you, tube. Happy 4th of July. That's why you could hear those firecrackers or fireworks going, going off. And just have to go with it. Run. Oh, that's weird. Right, 10. Print. Hello, YouTube. YouTube. There we go. That was better. Okay. And then quit. Uh, exit. Okay. Yeah. So buy just like you'd see with fourth. Now let's do a little bit with fourth. Four. This is really cool. New. This is RC fourth. Also Mike Riley. Uh, oh, I messed that up. FOR. New. RC 4.1 copyright 2006, 14 years ago, by Mike Riley, and it loaded up the dictionary. So in fourth, if you want to see the subroutines that already exist in the system, again, it's fourth, it's compiled and interpreted at the same time, speed of a compiler, interactiveness of an interpreter, you type in words to see those subroutines that already exist. The subroutines, commands, whatever you want to call them. Capital words. Nice buzzing. You can see the small number of words, but a useful set of words that are there. I want to point out a couple things. There's an out, an input, and then EF, I think, to check check flags, or I, I forget if it's if it's checking the EF lines or, or setting the EF lines. I'll have to look that up. But anyway, so you can probe a few lines on the system. I, I think it's it's for checking flags now that I I think about, but again, um, I, I, I'll have to look that up. And there's input and output commands, output bytes, say do a DAC. Really, really cool. Eventually, I'm going to have some videos of Pygmy Fourth and DOS and possibly Arduino or STM32 Fourth. And that's something to think about. The ability to have a very quick interpreted language that runs on microcontroller and lets you interact with the world. It shows you the power of fourth, even though, you know, everyone uses C pretty much or bash scripting for things. Okay, so let's type in our test programs. I'll do, oh, go back, 
test, or actually not test, let's call this hello. Uh, dot double quote hello YouTube. Hello YouTube. Semicolon. Oh, there. Dick. Okay. I mistyped that somehow. Hello, YouTube. Yeah, hello, YouTube. Hello. Oh, nice. How could I fix that? Okay. So I'll do forget hello if I want to get rid of a word I've defined. And then I'll type in hello again. And I'm going to add a carriage return. Hello, YouTube. CR. Oh, oh. All these typos today. Oh. Well, let's see. That didn't quite work as I expected to. Oh, yeah, I didn't forget. Hello. Hello, forget. Let's try that. Forget. Hello. Hello. Forget. Oh! Hey, look. So it put hello twice in the uh, dictionary and then happened to run one of my um, hello words. Let's do words again. Get hello forget. Hmm. Strange. Yeah, so I guess I'll have to read a little more about how to deal with that. Huh. Weird. Maybe it's buggy. Well, that's strange. Okay, so I'll do one more test word. Yeah, I, I, maybe there's some bugs in here or just depending on how I type things in, I get uh, different outputs, but I'll do one more test with fourth. Let's do a jump through the ASCII characters, 255, zero. Do I omit? It'll take whatever number and then omit the corresponding ASCII character. Whoop. Test. Well, it got something. Okay. And I'll type in bye. Let's get out of here. I'll begin. See, thanks to that buzzer, I just intentionally gave you all some nice, nice audio feedback when you're interacting with your 1802 computer. Very cool. So this was 40 years, almost 40 years later my recreation of this classic computer. It was a lot of fun, but I didn't do too much with it. And honestly, I think you're better off building a ELF emulator with a Arduino or just use Tiny Elf on your Palm device or a PC or probably for Android, there's something like this too. Well, I think that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And as always, like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching.